Warning, Hebrews Toys Reviews is not intended for children. It is for adult collectors and the people over the age of 18. Everybody, Hebro 77 here, and welcome to continuation of Star Trek Month. And today we will be reviewing Lieutenant, or I'm sorry, not Lieutenant, Season 1 Worf, and that would be Junior Grade Worf before he became head of security and the man behind weapons and, uh, was it weapons and navigational? Weapons and navigational control of all of that nature. Yes, that's right. Everyone's favorite Klingon today on Hebrews Toy Reviews. Uh, what's that? Sir, there's some Klingon guy who wants to talk to screen. you. I am Ambassador Ricardo Logan from the Klingon Federation. I do hope that you are treating this review with all respect to the Klingon no worries, culture. Sir. I shall treat the Klingon culture with all the respect it deserves. I should hope so. I would hate for you to be solely responsible for a war between the Federation and the Klingons. Well, it takes all the pressure off of me now, doesn't it? Well, we're reviewing Season 1 Wharf, so we, d we don't even get we don't even get into that yet. Very well. Get on with the review. Hey, hey, okay. Cut communications. Well, with all that being said, on with the review. Here is Junior Grade Wharf. It's very tough for me to say Wharf without saying Lieutenant Wharf because that's what we know him as throughout the majority of the series. He did not become an official Lieutenant Worf until the second season. After the events of Tasha Yar's death, he did not become Chief of Security until such time. As you can see, this Worf, well, let's get some more light on him I guess, has a, a red shirt and you could almost make the case that if uh, you wanted to use this figure is a different dimensional uh, like a captain or like a commander of some sort you could very well do that however you could clearly see his buttons here which are embedded into his Klingon ribbons or ribbons and they go all the way around the uniform I think they look quite nice and actually show up better on his season one uniform than they do on his season two uniform which is almost basically the same color <clears throat> although I do believe the second season uniform his uh, Klingon thingamajig here is a silver color rather than a golden color so it wouldn't uh, blend with his uniform and you can tell this is a season one uh, figure because of the stirrups of uh, the pants at the bottom and the way the collar goes at the top. Now Worf is an unusual figure and of course I promised the the Klingon guy from the Klingon ship that I would do him Klingon justice. Now, this figure came with some accessories of course I don't really have all of his all of his accessories I do have this silver backlet. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I don't want that Klingon warrior guy to get mad at me. But this is his season one back backlet, as opposed to his season two backlet, which is a sort of a reddish or orangish color 
for some reason. I guess they wanted to de de riff riff. Blah, 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 blah. I can't talk today. But anyway, <clears throat> this is a typical Klingon weapon. It works as almost like a, a sword would in a way. And, um, well, they get into certain battles with this and whatnot. And here is uh, another thing that came with this wharf a silver swordish looking thing, but I believe uh, it is called a Klingon. Uh, knife on the the contents list and then of course we have the dagger the Klingon dagger and for some reason these daggers can only be found in the purple color um, I might have seen it in a black color somewhere I don't know but I never seem to see it it doesn't really ever resemble like I don't know why they couldn't do it in the silver color like they did the back Backlit. Backlit. I, I'm, I'm going to get so much crap from that Klingon warrior guy. So anyway, there is that. And he does come with the standard phaser that all the Star Trek figures came with. Which I have neglected to mention until just now. And I might talk about that when I do my <clears throat> Tasha Yar review, a figure review. Now I have modified this one so that the phaser action actually doesn't come out of the phaser itself. And I really wish they would have made uh, the phasers like this rather than like this, which it is very gimmicky. And I do understand why Playmates did this, so that kids could get more play at it, that could pretend like this was shooting someone, like, you know, stuff like that. Um, I do not have him on his proper base. Um, and the only thing I could say about this wharf is he does bend his elbows 90 degrees and his legs, of course, bend at 90 degrees. Um, he is made... This wharf, Junior Grade Wharf, was primarily at uh, Ops or Technical. Um, well, not Technical. It was at Ops on the bridge he was never behind the uh technical because that's where tasha yard was that that little area there where he stands up and it operates miss uh not missiles uh torpedoes and phaser banks and all that stuff he did not get that position until season two and so well there you have it that's really all i have to say about junior grade wharf we will, however, review Lieutenant Worf when we do our Season 2 Star Trek reviews. Well, there you have it. Season 1 Worf, who later becomes Lieutenant Worf. But we won't dig into that until... Oh, no. What's it? Not again. All right. Put him on screen. I would like for you to be up to do further negotiations. Perhaps you will enjoy some of our blood wine, or perhaps maybe even some gawk. <laughs> I will have things ready for you to beam aboard. I am looking forward to it, Mr. Hebro 77. You want me to beam up there? Oh boy, I guess I better get used to eating earthworms. Very well then, I'm on my way. Until next time, remember this is Hebro77 saying, Knowing isn't just half the battle, it's the whole damn war. See you then. Alright, ready to beam up. <laughs>